Welcome back to the band guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. And today is the first video in the Garage Band to Logic Bootcamp, where we're gonna be going through everything you really need to know to make the switch from Garage Band to Logic. Now, this series is perfect for you if you just switched from Garage Band to Logic and you're feeling overwhelmed by it, or if you switched a while ago and you just don't think you're getting the most out of Logic, you know there's more you can do, but you don't know how to use all the different features you have. Or if you're just new to Logic, you're not even coming from Garage Band, this will likely be helpful to you as well. It will also be helpful if you're currently in Garage Band and you're trying decide if you should switch to Logic. This will give you some insights into Logic, but I've also done a video that really walks through should you switch from GarageBand to Logic that I'll link above and in the description as well. That'll help you decide if you really need to switch to Logic. Okay, now this series is gonna be broken out into three parts. We're gonna to try to make them as bite-sized and actionable for you as possible. In the first video today, we're gonna to be talking about all the different windows and everything that you're seeing in Logic that you didn't necessarily see inside GarageBand. In the second video, we're gonna cover all the features that are unlocked in Logic that you didn't have in GarageBand. And then in the third video, we'll cover all the new tools and plugins that you get in Logic that you didn't have in GarageBand, or at least the main ones. But before we even get into today's video, I wanna give you something. I'm guessing at least part of the reason that you made the jump from GarageBand to Logic is because you're hoping to make your music sound more professional, sound better. But unfortunately, the reality is Logic isn't inherently just gonna make your music sound better. But I'd like to give you something that will. It's a completely free six step checklist to a pro mix that just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and specifically how to do them inside Logic. It's completely free from link in the description below. Thousands of people have already downloaded this guide, so I know it's gonna help you out. But let's go and get into today's video where we're looking at the different windows that we have here inside Logic. So when you first open up Logic, you'll likely see a window like this, which you might be thinking, well, that looks just exactly like GarageBand. And it's true, it's very similar to GarageBand. But there's actually a second window and kind of a third and fourth view that you can configure as well. So let's go and talk about the second window. We're gonna open this by hitting Command-2 on the keyboard, or you can go up here to Window and go down to Open Mixer. Now, this window is basically like a mixing console like you'd have in a studio. You have all your faders here that you can pull up and adjust. You have all your pan positions here. You have all of your effect plugins up here. And then if you have any sins going out, you have all those listed here. So we're here, this is going off to bus one. And we see that bus one all the way over here. We'll talk about buses more in next week's video. So don't worry about that for now. But that's the main layout of this, this view. So a channel strip, just to be abundantly clear, you have your input here, and then it goes down through your plugins, then you have any sends that it would send off to, and then you have your output routing. So you could output to a different place than just your main stereo output, which is your default. Again, we'll talk about that stuff a little bit more next week, just wanna give you an overview. And then finally, you hit your uh, pan position and your volume fader here. Now, technically, it actually goes from the volume to the pan position to the output, but neither here nor there at this point. But so that's the configuration of a channel strip. And there's a couple different ways that we see this channel strip. So it's important to know that. Now, a cool thing about this window is, uh, let's say you have two monitors, you could pull this window off to a second monitor and keep your main window here where you can see all your regions and move around inside your session on one screen and uh, this mixer view up on another screen. But let's say you don't have a second monitor and you'd like to be able to do everything on one screen really easily. Well, this is where you have the third and fourth view configuration that Logic set up that I think is really, really clever. Apple set up, I guess, technically. The first is that if I just hit X on this keyboard or hit this little mixer icon here, it pulls up that mixer window just at the bottom of my screen. And I can make this as small as I want. So if I just wanna show my faders, for example, I can just see my faders, but then see the rest of my session up here. Or I could pull it all the way up where I can see all of my processing and just kind of see one track up here at the top, depending on your screen size. So that's really helpful. There's a lot of times if I just need to do something quickly, I'll just do it on this one window view by hitting X and pulling it up. The second way that you can con configure your view is to hit I on the keyboard or hit this little I up here, which brings up what they call the inspector window. Now what this is gonna show us is that channel strip where all the processing going on for the track that you have selected, so here it's this tambourine, and the output of that track. So here we're going to the stereo output, so it's showing me that. If I were to change this output to a bus or if I had a track stack, which again, we'll talk about in next week's video, it would show me that output here. And then if you wanted to send off to a send, let's say I was sending off to this reverb here, if I touch this reverb, it's gonna show me that output. And then if I go back to it, I can come back and just see my main output. But then anytime I touch the bus here, it's gonna show me the output of that bus. So I could quickly affect a reverb send or something like that right here in this one view, which I think is super 
clever. I think the way they've set this up is really smart uh, and it makes it really easy and accessible to just tweak things in your Mac. So a lot of times I get my initial level set in my mixer window and then I spend most of my time actually just tweaking, flipping through different tracks just over here on this inspector view because I only really need to be focusing on one track at a time most of the time. Now, let me show you a couple things that you get with this mixer view that you didn't have access to necessarily in GarageBand. So first and foremost, like let's say I just wanna copy this EQ that I've set here onto this track next to it. I can hold option on the keyboard and just drag this over here and it will very quickly just copy that EQ over. Or let's say, uh, let's go to where I have a bunch of vocals here. So I have a lead vocal, and then I have all these backing vocals over here. So let's say I set an EQ on my lead vocal and I get this processed exactly the way I want to cut out all this, maybe a little bit of mud, a little bit of brightness. Again, obviously I would listen to this while I'm actually mixing. Then let's say I put a compressor on here and I set that. Once I get it all dialed in, instead of setting it for every individual track here, I can go up to setting, copy channel strip setting, and then I can select all my other vocal tracks here and go to paste plugins only. So I'm not gonna throw off all my volume and pan positions, but it's gonna paste those EQ and compressors for every single vocal here. So I very quickly just EQ'd and compressed all the vocals, assuming that they recorded the same way, this will at least get you a starting point, if not all the way processed for those different vocals. A lot of times I'll process different vocals differently, but if it's the exact same part being sung with the same microphone, same singer, same room, all those variables are the same, sometimes this will work and at least get you that starting point, if not the entire EQ and compression setting that you might want. So really, really cool time saver. So one other thing in this window that you don't have in GarageBand is this little button right here, which all it does is make the audio waveforms look bigger, but let's say this bass track here, which I recorded a little bit too quietly, if I just wanted to view that bigger, I didn't need to turn up the volume, then I could just pull this up. If you just click on it and pull up, then you can just, it becomes a fader and you can just set this to whatever size you want to be able to see what's going on on your audio files. Again, this isn't actually making it louder or quieter, it's just making it visually bigger or smaller, which is really helpful to be able to see what's going on when you're editing and moving around inside your session. So some songs I don't need to have that on at all, some songs I have it on for all the tracks all the time just to be able to see everything going on. Okay, another one that's really cool is this feature right here which uh, vertically collapses everything down so I can see all the tracks in one place. And I can click it again and it's gonna put me back to however I had it oriented. And then I can also click this button right here and let's say I zoomed in a bunch. When I click this button, it's just gonna take me out to see the entire song. And then if I click it again, it'll put me right back where I was again. So I really like that. Just handy little features to move around. You can also hold option on the keyboard and drag up and that's gonna make all your tracks look bigger you can drag down and it's gonna make them smaller. That's something you also don't get inside GarageBand. And then you can also hold it and option and drag left or right and that's gonna zoom you in and out. That is something you had inside GarageBand. If you're in GarageBand, you didn't know that, there's a little bonus for you. Okay, so those are all the windows inside Logic. I love the way they have this configured. I think it's really easy to move inside Logic, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. Now, really quickly, let me just say, don't worry if it feels overwhelming at this point. You don't have to implement all these. If you just wanna stay in this GarageBand view and you're comfortable mixing there, then I would do that. The one thing that I think they kind of took away with the Logic view is you used to find your plugins here on the track uh, on the smart control window and they don't, they're not here anymore. So to access your plugins, you need to hit I to bring up this inspector window. Other than that, you could more or less use this exactly the same as you did in GarageBand and just work through it as you did in GarageBand and just slowly step things up as you're feeling comfortable. Learn one thing at a time and you'll continue to grow. Don't worry about using everything just because it's there. Now, again, if you don't already have that six step checklist to a pro mix, be sure to download it. It's really gonna help you out. It's completely free. It just go through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them specifically and Inside Logic. Before you go, I'd love to hear, do you have any questions about Logic, making the jump from GarageBand or just Logic in general? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week where we're gonna go through the features that you unlock inside Logic from GarageBand. One thing at a time, I can only handle